Hi everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Parashah Pointers, where we delve into the weekly Parashah. We look for insights in how we could raise ourselves and ultimately raise our children. A fire went up from before Hashem and burned them up and they died before Hashem. This is the parasha that talks about the death of two great people, Nadan and Avihu. But it's also the week where we lost a very, very, very great rabbi, a great man, the leading rabbi of the generation, the Gadol Hadar, Rav Chaim Kanievsky, Zecher Sadiq Livracha. He was Sar HaTorah. He was everything, and I'm sure we're all hearing amazing stories and amazing things about this great man. My son, who's living in Israel, uh, told me about Purim, how it was in Yerushalayim. He said everybody was enjoying, and Yerushalayim was on Friday, that's because it's a walled city. Uh, so they were celebrating, and they were dancing, and they were happy, and they were drinking, and eating the seuda. And then the news came that Rav Chaim passed away. He said, immediately everyone became sober. It's as if Purim ended. That's it. It was a new reality. We lost the Gadol Hador. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, I'm sorry. Almost a million people thronged to, to B'nai Brak to pay their final respects to the Sar HaTorah, the Gadol Hador of Chaim Kanievsky. Zecher Sadiq V'Kadosh I want to just set, read you a quote that was said by his brother-in-law, Rav Yitzchak Silverstein. This is a man who weighs as much as the whole rest of the nation. God Almighty takes the man who weighs as much of all the people in order to atone for the people of Israel. That's what happened when Rav Chaim passed away. Rav Chaim maintained an astounding, an astounding schedule. Listen to his schedule. He woke up at Hatzot Laila, let's just say around 2 a.m. He had a 20-hour day of learning, including the entire Torah, Tanakh, Mishnah, uh, Babylonian Talmud, Jerusalem Talmud, Midrashim, Zohar, Jewish Law, Mishnah Torah, Tur, Shulchan Aruch, and Mishnah Beruda. People, <laughs> who, who even does this in their lifetime, let alone to do it yearly? Every single year he made a siyum on this. It's hard to understand how great he is, and we'll slowly learn little by little about this great man. But how did a man who held no public position lived in a rundown apartment, never spoke in public, become the address for every Jew who wanted a beracha, advice or help in making life or death decisions. How? <laughs> There's only one answer. It's the fact that he dedicated his life to the learning of Torah and clinging to Hashem exclusively. There was nothing else in his life. I remember the first time I went to receive a beracha from Rav Chaim. I couldn't believe the light that was coming out of his face. It was like there was a light bulb in him. It, it was something beyond belief to see. A person who spent his entire life in purity, examining every word he said, anything he listened to, anything he saw. This loss, as painful as it is, also presents an amazing opportunity for parents to speak to their children about who their true heroes are in life. When a person discusses his role models, it tells us who they are, what they value. Who do we look up to? Who do we emulate in our lives? Our children are watching and learning from our reactions. They see, what do my parents think about Rav Chaim passing away? What does my home look like? Is there, are we talking about it? Are we infatuated with it? Are we talking about how amazing he was? Is that who the person that we look up to is? I once spoke to a great man and I asked him, how do, can I, how do I really know if my, if my children are you know, on the right path. I know it look like they're doing everything, but how do you know if they truly feel that connection to Hashem? He told me an amazing thing. He says, very simple. Look at the pictures that he hangs up in his room and the outfit that he wears for Purim. That tells you who he really wants to be. It's a little bit of a scary thought. There are events eulogizing this great rabbi in shuls across our community. There'll be stories. There's going to be articles published. Our home should be permeated with conversations about this great man. Show our kids who we look up to, and they'll look up to the same type of people. As we hear these great stories, we have to make sure to let those messages 
messages come into our lives and be incorporated in the values and the lessons that have to be in our lives. Let us do all we can to ensure that this event leaves a mark that our family will never, ever forget. Shabbat Shalom.